Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. It's moving day. So welcome back, everybody. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today. And as I said when I opened this video, today is moving day. Now, this is actually Saturday morning, November 6th. Now, I had actually come down the night before, which would have been, obviously, November 5th, and just to get everything kind of organized and somewhat packed. Now, what you're seeing here is after probably about 10 or 12 hours of work, packing, organizing, cleaning, and, well, all that other fun stuff that comes along with doing a move like this. Now, I think the last time that I was actually here, this is back at the old shop in Wisconsin. Now, I think the last time that I was actually here was the last day that we had to actually finalize the move out of our old house. And when I left, it was pretty much a mad dash just to get all the crap out of the house and just find a home for it somewhere. So <laughs> when I was dumping it all off here, there was no rhyme or reason to where something got put. It just got put and just so, I, it, just so that it could just be done. So the goal for this trip, other than obviously trying to get the boat moved, is just to get the bare essentials loaded up. So that means all my epoxies, all my resins, fillers, glass, basically everything that I'm going to need to just kind of get that ball started again over at the new place. Now, where I left off with the transom on the Bertram here is, well, basically there is no transom. So obviously these engines, they're not going to be going down the road with this, at least not on this trip. So I needed to find a way to secure these cherry pickers so that they didn't lose hydraulic pressure because, you know, when I was still here every day, I mean, I could come in, give them a quick pump just to make sure they didn't, you know, I didn't come in in the morning and find them laying down on the ground. So what I did here is I basically I cut some angle iron and hose clamped them to the ram so that you know the the arm itself just basically bottoms out on these uh, on, on these pieces of angle iron so this should work out just fine it looks a little sketchy at least to me because it, it i don't know it just doesn't seem like to be a good fit but it's the best option that i've got and it's just well it's just gonna have to work now up inside the boat there really wasn't a whole lot of prep that needed to get done other than just well a lot of cleaning to be honest now the one exception to that are these two bulkheads now these bulkheads they are cut and they are fit but they are not secured in any way other than by clamps and what i ended up doing here was basically just running a couple bolts two along the top as well as two along the bottom on both the port and the starboard side now is this adequate absolutely not not even close but for a short move like this relatively short it's still about a three hour run but for a relatively short run like this where the they're not going to be receiving any stress for the really whatsoever i think this is going to work out just fine at least i'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's going to work out just fine and wouldn't you know it as soon as we get everything basically packed strapped down and ready to go it starts to rain now as far as the boat is concerned i could care less if that gets wet or not but the entire bed of my truck is filled with well stuff that just cannot get rained on so, you know, hurry up and wait, I guess, as the old saying goes. Now, the person helping me out with the move here is my shop neighbor, Paul. Now, coincidentally, he also works on boats, except his, not solely, but his main specialty is basically electronics and mechanical. And over the years, this kind of a relationship worked out very, very well for both of us. So we'd bring in large projects and I would do my part. And then when that part was done, we'd haul it over next door to his. There's a five minute move and then he would do his part. And then, you know, hopefully get everything delivered and have a happy customer come springtime. Now, as you remember, I was having some serious concerns last week, well, and actually up to this point, about the bearings on this trailer. Now, Paul had gone through and checked everything, and he, he gave it the green light. So, right at this point, we're about an hour and a half, maybe two hours into the move, and we've been stopping about every half hour, give or take, just to kind of feel the, feel the bearings and see if there, anything is getting hot and smoking. And I, wanna, I gotta say, this move has just gone absolutely flawlessly. It, it could not have gone any better. And luckily, we made it back to the house without incident, so next thing to do is give it a nice little wash down, because this is going to be the last time this boat is going to be outside for probably quite a while. So I'm going to hit it with a power washer, get all the road grime and whatever off, as well as all the old fiberglass. I mean, this thing was a dusty little pig when we pulled it out of the shop, so might as well bring in a clean boat into the new shop. So we're going to power wash it, and I think we're going to sit back, have a few cold ones, and enjoy our win. I mean, it may not be much of a win, but hey, take them when you get them.
Now the units that I'm unboxing here, these are what I'm hoping is going to be my solution for maintaining a good air quality within the shop over the winter. And I'll be talking a lot more about these things next week, but basically what I purchased were three units from a company called Industrial Made, M-A-I-D, and they're a company based out of Cortland, Nebraska. And of these three units, two of them are going to be going in the main shop area where I'm going to be working this winter, and then the third one is just basically going to be going into storage until the addition goes on into the wood shop for next spring. But for right now, this first unit is going to be going along that back wall, kind of just basically right behind where the Bertram is going to be. So this needs to go in first before I can bring the boat in. Now, speaking of bringing the boat in, let's get that one done. It's had a few days to dry out. No, I think everything should be fine. So let's get her hooked up and haul her up to her new home. So now with the Bertram here, this pretty much closes out a chapter that's been in the making for pretty much six months, damn near to the day. Now, when we first moved here in May, uh, really the only thing that was here was just a bare shelled building. And since then, we've gotten all the utilities run, meaning the gas and electric, and we got that run and hooked up. We got all the walls and the sheeling, sheeling, the ceiling sheathed. And I gotta say, that, that step damn near killed me. That was a shoulder buster by no stretch of the imagination. Uh, from there, we got the insulation done, all the spray foam up in the ceiling, as well as the dense pack in the walls. Uh, all the outlets and an electric run around the, around the perimeter of this building here. The heat hooked up. That was really nice, I'm not gonna lie. It was really nice being able to walk in here and not freeze your ass off. <laughs> and then finally, this old girl. Now, there is still more to do if I'm able to get there. Now, pretty much the last thing on the, on the list would be to get all the big tools moved here, meaning like the table saw, the band saw, planer, joint, basically my woodworking stuff. Now, although it would be nice, it wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker if it doesn't happen. Because right now, this time of the year, uh, I mean, winter could set in tonight and we could wake up like we did, whatever, two weeks ago to a foot of snow. Now, luckily that snow melted off, uh, but you know, we're almost mid-November now. If we get a, another blast like that, which can happen any time, most likely it's not going to melt off. So if we get that, I don't know that, that's, I'm not, that I would even be able to drive you know, a U-Haul truck up that hill with snow and ice. And even, I don't even know that I'd even want to try it. So if I'm able to get that stuff here, that would be a bonus. That would be great. If I'm not, again, it's not going to be a deal breaker. I can, for the most part, I can do everything that I need to do with, with hand tools. It's going to be a little bit more crude, maybe not quite as, as efficient, you know, time-wise, but it can be done. So right now, the push is off for me. Now, the one thing that I have not really talked much about at all is the heating system. And to be quite honest, that's mainly because we really haven't had the temperatures that's really going to push this thing to see how efficient all this work between the insulation and this heating system, how efficient it's actually going to turn out to be. 
I mean, because for the most part, all the temps that we've been working in right now have been maybe mid to upper 20s to low 30s. And for a system like this, at least up in this area, that's nothing. Uh, we'll come back and circle back on this after we get some, you know, zero, even below zero temperatures with some, some you know, pretty screaming winds. That's going to be the test on, specifically on the insulation, uh, but also how well this building is actually going to retain the heat. Now, one thing I do have a concern of, and I, I've had that since day one with, uh, you know, kind of trying to keep this space heated, is that the slab, this is going to be a heat sink. I mean, this is going to suck the heat out of the air. I mean, uh, there's, there's just no getting around that, as well as around the perimeter. Now, as you can see around the perimeter, it's basically a cinder block. And, you know, we've had some rain, some melting snow, and, and you can see some water's been kind of being able to either permeate the brick or basically wick its way in between the brick and the actual poured slab. And for, so for right now, I don't think there's really anything that I can do about that, at least not this time of the year, uh, at least not this year. Now, I guess I'm going to wait and see. I, you know, I'll, get, I'll go through this winter and see what the heating bills are going to cost me. Uh, see if we get any frost along the sides of the walls. And if, you know, because if there's moisture there and there's a difference in temperature between inside and outside, if that's going to, you know, cause things to start moving around on me. I don't know. Um, but I do know that uh, moisture coming through the walls is probably not a good thing. So next year, that is going to have to be something that I'm going to have to, uh, you know, basically mitigate. What exactly my options are, I don't really know. Maybe I have to go around, do a footing around here and, and uh, I, I don't know. I'll talk with the guys that do this for a living and see what they recommend. But for right, at least for this winter, I'm just hoping it doesn't do any damage. <laughs> and with that said, I think this is going to be a good place to end this video for this week. Now, as always, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this interesting, kind of following along this whole journey start to finish. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified every week when new videos come out. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave those down below. I'll do my best to get back with you. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today production.